Romans 14.10 says, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not, thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. All born-again believers, those who have accepted Jesus Christ, believing on him as their crucified, buried, and risen Savior, will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Since Jesus Christ has already been judged for our sins on Calvary, a Christian doesn't have to be judged again for his sins, and this is why he escapes the great white throne judgment. But we are going to look at some things about this judgment that we will face, the judgment seat of Christ. And first off, we're going to look at when does the judgment take place. This judgment will take place sometime after the catching away of the saints. That happens before the time of Jacob's trouble begins. While men are going through what people refer to as the tribulation down here, Christians will be getting crowns up there. And many are denying the pre-tribulation rapture belief, so they believe that they are going to go through the tribulation time period. But if you look at Revelation 4.1, you will see the Apostle John, who is a type of the Bride of Christ. He is the disciple whom Jesus loved, and he is caught up in a rapture in Revelation 4.1. And then in Revelation 4.4, 4, you have 24 elders sitting with crowns of gold on their heads, showing something has taken place where people have received some crowns if you continue reading to chapter 6 you then see the first seal is opened but a rapture has already taken place and somebody's already been given some crowns so i believe this shows the order of events where you have the rapture then the judgment seat of christ comes right after since jude 14 talks about how we come back with the lord jesus christ at the second coming this shows that the judgment seat of Christ is over before the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. And if you read in Revelation 19.9, you will see what is called the marriage supper of the Lamb. This seems to be an event that takes place right before the second coming. Because two verses later in Revelation 19.11, you have Jesus Christ coming back on a white horse. So the judgment seat of Christ comes after the rapture, but before the marriage supper of the Lamb and the second coming. So how could he judge all of the body of Christ in this short period of time? Well, there is no time in eternity, so that could have something to do with it. He could also judge everyone at once. I guess it's one of those things we won't know until we get there. So now that we know when this judgment takes place, we will now look at who is being judged. Many believe that the Old Testament saints are also judged at the judgment seat of Christ. But I believe it is only born-again believers in Christ that are judged. Many believe that there aren't any righteous or safe people being judged at the great white throne judgment. But they forget about the saints from the tribulation and the saints from the millennium. Who will have to be judged at the great white throne since the judgment seat of Christ will have already happened. Hebrews 9.27 says, As it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. And then look at this verse about this future judgment, the great white throne. In Revelation 20 and verse 13, it says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. They are judged according to their works. Old Testament saints, tribulation, and millennial saints all have works involved in their salvation, unlike born-again believers who are saved by grace through faith without works. While they are saved and lost being judged at the great white throne. At the judgment seat of Christ, you only have saved men who are in the body of Christ being judged. And now let's look at what this judgment is all about. Since Jesus Christ already died for our sins and was judged for our sins at Calvary, we can't be judged for our sins again. So this judgment is about our Christian service. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. And 1 Corinthians 3, 14 and 15, If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, 
yet so as by fire. The works you did for the Lord Jesus Christ will get you rewards, while your lack of work or work done for self will be burned up. But you will be saved, yet so as by fire. This doesn't mean you will get burned up in fire. The Bible says a similar phrase about Noah in 1 Peter 3.20. It says he was saved by water. Saved by water in the sense the water didn't touch him. You will be saved yet so as by fire, and the fire never touches you. The best illustration of this in the Bible would be Lot. He was living for the world in Sodom, and he got out of Sodom just before the fire fell. Now that we know when the judgment takes place, who's getting judged, and what the judgment is about, Let's look at the crowns and rewards you can receive at this judgment. If a Christian has a lack of works for the Lord Jesus Christ, then he can end up naked at this judgment. 2 Corinthians 5.3 says, If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Revelation 19.8 And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. The fine linen represents the righteousness of saints. At the great white throne judgment, the sinner will just have the filthy rags of his own self-righteousness. But now let's look at some of the crowns. First, we will see the Bible believer's crown. In Job 31, 35, and 36, it says, Oh, that one would hear me. Behold, my desire is that the Almighty would answer me, and that mine adversary had written a book. Surely I would take it upon my shoulder and bind it as a crown to me. You will probably get this one Crown for being faithful to God's book, doing your best to stand up for the perfect words of God, reading it, spreading it out to others, and living in it. I doubt somebody who believes in the NIV, RSV, ASV, and all the other modern versions of the Bible is going to get a Bible believer's crown. If you believe in using the other versions, then you do not believe in a perfect Bible. The perfect Bible is the King James Bible. And just because you're King James only doesn't mean you believe it. If you want to change the words in it to make them fit your belief, then you're not a Bible believer. The best way to approach the Bible is to adjust your beliefs to fit what it says. Next, we see the family crown. Proverbs 17 and 6 says, Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. Notice it says children's children. Grandchildren can get crowns for their grandparents by living a godly life. Next, we see the crown of rejoicing in 1 Thessalonians 2.19. This crown is given to soul winners. And how many souls do you have to lead to the Lord to get this crown? I guess just one. If you win one soul, then you are a soul winner. But the majority have never won a soul to Jesus Christ. But if you lead more than one, then you get more precious stones in your crown. Next, we see the crown of righteousness in 2 Timothy 4.8. And this crown is given for loving the Lord's appearing to the point that his return would be more desired to you than anything else you got going on. Like you're not wanting to get married and have kids before he comes. You want him to come now because you love his appearing. If you realize that the Lord can come back at any moment, then you purify yourself. And the rapture is a purifying hope. You're looking for the Lord Jesus Christ and not the Antichrist. And next we see the crown of life in James 1.12. The crown is given for enduring temptation as you fight against sin. And also someone in the tribulation, it would be a martyr's crown. If someone lives for the Lord until the day they die, they will get this crown. And it, even though we're in America and we're not seeing much persecution, you could easily die as a martyr. Still, today, it doesn't just have to be in the tribulation. And next we see the crown of glory. 1 Peter 5.4 This crown is awarded to pastors who properly feed their flocks. You can't properly feed your flock using the modern versions of the Bible. If you're poisoning your flock with a new international version, the Revised Standard Version, a new King James Version, an American Standard Version, and so on, then you will miss the reward. Also, if you are teaching them with the King James, but yet you change it while teaching it to prove your belief, 
you will probably miss the reward. The incorruptible crown in 1 Corinthians 9.25, this crown is given for temperance, which is keeping the body under control and keeping it fit for the service of the Lord. And this is probably one of the hardest crowns to get. You must keep your body, body physically fit as an Olympic athlete would so you can do any task the Lord would have you to do. And Revelation 3.11 says, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. How can you lose your crown? Well, let's look at 2 John 7-11. through 11. It says, For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not the things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresses Gresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God, he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not, his, not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. For he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. It seems one might could lose his reward by supporting false prophets and men who don't abide in the doctrine of Christ. Some Christians are tempted to support or go along with false prophets or compromisers or deceivers so that they can gain popularity or money. But if you don't want to worry about losing anything at the judgment seat of Christ, then do not support these kind of men. And after a man gets saved, his foundation is Jesus Christ. He then begins to build on this foundation. 1 Corinthians 3.12 says, Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. This gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble are given out according to the quality of your work. This judgment is about quality and not quantity. The things the man does for the Lord will show up in his building as gold, silver, and precious stones. The things he did for himself will show up as wood, hay, and stubble. Gold stands for God. It is the highest element. Crowns are made of gold. New Jerusalem is gold. If you want to get gold in heaven, then worship God. Sing praises to Him. Not just for others to hear, but for God to hear. Silver stands for redemption and the Word of God. And you can have a silver tongue. As it says in Proverbs 10.20, the, the, the tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. When you expound on the word of God and tell the story of the Lord Jesus Christ and how he redeemed us dying on the cross for our sins, then you set up for yourself silver at the judgment seat of Christ. And precious stones are the people that God allows you to lead to the Lord. Every time you lead a soul to Jesus Christ, that is another stone in your crown. Zechariah 9.16 says, And the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be as the stones of a crown, lifted up as an ensign upon his land. If you have ever been on a sports team and had a banquet at the end of the season, this is similar to the judgment seat of Christ. At a sports banquet, the good players are recognized, while the bad players and bench warmers don't really get mentioned. Also, the bad things about the good players don't really get mentioned either. This is very similar to the judgment seat of Christ since we aren't judged for sins but for service. And we will also be told what cities we will get to rule over. In Luke 19, 11 through 27, servants are given a pound each and are told they can gain by trading. The more he gained, the more cities he gained authority over. The one who gained nothing lost the pound but didn't lose his salvation. A, a worldly Christian at the judgment seat of Christ will not get any rewards, but he's not going to lose his salvation. And Revelation 26 says, Blessed and holy is he that hath pardoned in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And then 2 Timothy 2.12, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. The denying here is referring to our reign and not our salvation. He's not going to deny us salvation. We're eternally secure, but we can be denied a reign. 
These things should be an encouragement for us to do service for the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 6, 7, and 8 says, With good will doing service, as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Now that we know when this judgment takes place, who's being judged, what the judgment is about, and what rewards are gained or lost, let's see how this judgment should make us want to live a holy life. Matthew 6.19 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Why would you want to set up treasures down here instead of setting up incorruptible things for yourself in heaven? Instead of being lazy and doing nothing, get up and do something. Read your Bible, pray, witness, get a ministry, and do something for God. This is how you will lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Hebrews 9.27 says, And as it is appointed unto, unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. We are all going to die and face a judgment. If you knew that you were going to court next week to stand before a judge, you would be thinking about it all week. Prisoners in prison are always thinking about their next day in court. We should always have in our mind that one day we are going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. This should be the greatest motivation to live right and pleasing in His sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 10, and 11 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. We persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. While we aren't judged for our sins, but for service, Paul still calls it a terror. It will be a fearful thing to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and have him point out our lack of service. In Revelation 1.17, when John saw the Lord Jesus Christ, he fell at his feet as dead. Now look at some of the descriptions of the judge. In Revelation 1.14 and 15, His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. You will stand in front of a righteous judge, who came down and lived in the flesh, but never sinned one time. This same judge is the same one who created everything. Keeping these things in mind, this should be more than enough to keep us living right. We don't live right to stay saved. We want to live right because we love the Lord Jesus Christ and appreciate that He lived right for us. If He hadn't have been sinless, then He wouldn't have been able to be our Savior. We should appreciate Him dying for us and want to repay Him by obeying Him. We are slanderously reported to believe we can go out and sin since we are eternally secure and kept saved by grace. But no one in their right mind believes that they can sin and do whatever they want. There are consequences for sin and lack of service. And these are eternal consequences because if you live for self, then you will lose rewards.